I have to put a note on my door. Don't ring doorbell. <laughs> <laughs> if the paint delivery guy is coming, don't ring. <laughs> All right. I just admitted everyone. Oh, there's some new names on there. Very fun. This is going to be so fun, especially if you're 13 or above. They'll love that too. Awesome. It looks like we have um, all 10 of us here, so I will go ahead and uh, begin. And if we have any last minute um, people that come on, I'll go ahead and admit them later on. So, and I'll just fill them in. Thank um, you, sir. I'm Rosie. I am the Arts and Culture Specialist with the City of Goodyear. Uh, we are so happy that you are here this morning with us. Uh, we know it's an early morning, but um, we're really grateful to be hosting these classes. Um, and we host them every Saturday, every other Saturdays, Tuesdays, and also Thursdays. So uh, we did change the schedule a little bit. I will go ahead and let you know how um, our setup goes just because we, it looks like we have some new names here. So for setup, we, I always recommend we use speaker view and you can change your layouts on the top right corner. Everyone is admitted on a muted basis that way we give Deborah the platform and she is able to be our main focus um, and besides that if you do have any questions we have a, an option down below where you can um, send me reactions or on the bottom right hand side you can also chat in the box um, and you don't have to chat to everyone you don't have to send your chat to everyone. You can send that individually to myself or Deborah, um, and we will get that to we will get that answered as soon as possible. So I'll just go ahead and uh, let Deborah take over. Yeah. All right. Good morning, everybody. I'm happy you're joining us on a sunny Saturday morning. I almost said Sunday. I feel like the weeks are just kind of flying by. We've been busy painting. If you've been able to join me the last. A uh, few uh, Saturday mornings, we've done some peacocks, and some giant flowers, and now we're doing a giant cat. So this will wake you up this morning, especially the colors, too, or whatever color you choose to make your cat. Your cat will be purple, yellow, green. You do not have to do what colors I'm doing. I do have one uh, who's done in oranges and reds, and then I use the complementary of uh, some blues and greens. And then up here, this one's just tinted with white, so it has more of a pastel feel. So I was using the same colors, the primaries, but in this one, I tinted it and made it uh, more pastel. So, cats. Wow, if you're a cat lover, then you're good. We're moving out here, and so um, I do love them, and I love their eyes, I love their personalities. And uh, I, I've always been kind of, they're just kind of a mysterious animal. You have a dog now, so it's very different. Dogs are a little bit different creature. Um, let's just go over what we need while there's some that might be still chiming in today. So on your list, you were asked to uh, have a canvas. And your canvas does not have to be brand new like mine. In fact, I've got a little scarring on there, but we're going to cover the whole thing. It could be that you just have something old for when someone was visiting, or I had a student who never showed. Uh, he moved out of town, and he had to quite fix. He had to quite finish. Looks like he's got some spaceship going on there. <laughs> but you can paint over that. That's really easy. If you have like bumps or braces on the canvas and you're just struggling with that, just take some sandpaper, some fine sandpaper, and rub that down. And then you can paint right over the canvas. And it really is um, economical for you. And in a time when we're not uh, frequenting the stores as much, you can, in a pinch, just paint over something. This one um, we had used when we did our Starry Night. Or desert night and so um, if you want to go ahead and blank your whole canvas out and go ahead and make it orange while I'm 
talking, you can. Uh, but before you start blanking everything out, you're going to want to know kind of what direction or color you're going to want. And we're going to save the middle. So we're only going to be painting the exterior sides before we get to the middle. You need two brushes. One of them feels really um, rough, kind of rough, like feels like hog's hair, like if you were to pet a pig. Um, so this one is the one we start out with because it will hold more paint. The other one feels like forest hair, sable hair, synthetic. But it's very smooth. So this is really great for detail, doing the eyes, uh, doing some of our strokes on the face. And if you do have a smaller brush, those are okay, but you can tell there's not much detail in the cap today. But a smaller round brush has a, has a uh, smaller tip on it, and that might be okay for those eyes. I know I put optional have a oil pastel, so if it's all dry, and later you just feel more comfortable using an oil pastel to make those whites of the eye. Sometimes I do that. Um, I went to the local library and just looked at different hats for this project. And it's interesting that our silver tabby is one of the most um, popular cats. Uh, it doesn't have to be silver. It could be it just says silver in there. But long-haired tabbies. And that's why we're going to do the long hair because I just like all the fluffy hair. Um, one of the most famous would be obviously the Persian cat. And look at his face there. You can see uh, that he's got more of a square or a mushed marshmallow. So that's what we're going to start drawing today. Um, I have foam plates that I use to mix and pour my paint on. I have a cup of water for dirty, not to be mistaken for my drinking water. And I have some napkins handy because you always need those while you're cleaning your brush. So, you have your primary paints, that's where we're going to start. And I also have a pencil, or in this case, charcoal, and a piece of chalk, so to show it better for you. Sometimes I use charcoal, but if you don't want that to mix and muddy up your paints, you wouldn't want to use charcoal so much. You'd rather just use your school pencil. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get started here. I need to decide if my long-haired tabby is going to have more slanted eyes or round eyes. I did kind of round an oval circle here. Um, if you want to do a more slanted like a traditional cat, that's fine. Uh, so you decide how you want them. I'm just going to block this in and I'm going to draw it in my chalk so it'll just stand out a little bit better. I'm just using something from the sidewalk. Oh. They had some great chalk competitions at the city of Goodyear last month. It was so fun to see everybody's creations. Okay, I put the eyes about a third of the way from the, the top of the canvas, and I made them more oval. If you want them to be even bigger, just a little bit bigger, you can be drawing with your paint too. It's okay because you're going to cover over that. So you could take um, a yellow or some orange and just draw your eye location. But nose, believe it or not, don't draw this part, but I'm going to show you what's happening. Believe it or not, if I were to do a line connecting the two eyes, and I did an equal lateral triangle, that just means three sides are the same. One, two, three, the same length. This is where my nose is going to go. Bet you didn't know there was math in art. And it's kind of early on Saturday morning to be doing math. Honestly, um, there's so much math, and I think you can have fun with math doing art. So I, I love that I can play with my triangle and realize, oh my gosh, that I know exactly where to put my nose. Because the Persian and the tabby kind of have a little bit flatter face. Obviously, there's some different types of cats that have the longer um, nose location, so you, your triangle might be more than an equilateral. Okay, so I have my nose, my eyes, and now I'm going to do that mushed marshmallow face that we were talking about for the kind of flat tabby. So I'm going to draw kind of a mushed marshmallow, and that way I know where to stop my background paint. I don't want to paint in there. Okay, it looks like a Martian right now. It's 
me crazy. But it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. If somebody's walking by, by right now and they say, oh my gosh, what are you doing? You can say, it's a work in progress. Stephon Pastor used to tell me all that, that all the time, too. We're all a work in progress. Okay, here we go. I'm going to use my hog's hair brush, and I am going to make my cat orange. So he's mostly orange. And then I'm going to use blue down here, which is the opposite of orange, down here as like the shadow part of his body. So his face is really bright. The portrait, when you're doing portrait, it's not about anything else. It's not about the rest of the body as I have here in this picture. It's really from the chest up. So I want to make this part below his neckline just be a shadow. So I'm choosing the opposite of orange, which is blue. If you want to do a, a, a yellow cat, you might do purple down here. If you want to do a red cat, you might do green down here. Now, how did I do this one? Well, I wanted to have more of a yellowish, pinkish, you know, uh, pastel looking cat here. So I chose to put white in my blue to put that as my background. So let's get started. Okay, so I'm going to mix red and yellow. I'm so glad you all are joining us today. We've been doing the Saturday morning PJs and art earlier in the morning for the last couple of weeks. I think we've got two more coming up at this time. Maybe, maybe it's even three. I know we're going through August. Okay, so we're going to paint the background. You can see I'm kind of going every which way. Definitely good with yellow to put some red or white in it because yellow is transparent and it tends to uh, look like it's not going on. It's like you almost want to put another layer on really quick. Well, it's because it's a transparent color. Okay, this is just going to be the background color. You can do, work on the edges too if you want of your canvas. If you have one of those gallery wrap canvases. But I'm not going to worry about that right this second. I am kind of directing my stroke toward his face and for the majority of my strokes, but some of them go every which way. And I'm just taking my brush and pointing it kind of toward him like that. When I get down here, this is when I'm going to switch to some of the blue. Think about like uh, some of your professional uh, football teams where they uh, have the opposite colors on their jerseys. Um, like the Miami Dolphins or the New Orleans Saints. So you'll see that they're always using contrasting colors because it shows up better. It's more pleasing to the eye. It shows up better on Camera on the field. There we go. And not going all the way into my mush marshmallow just yet. See that? Obviously, it's going to have a lot more layering over the top. This is just my first. Now, I, I do like to paint the way hair grows. So I do know down here at his neck, it's going to be growing down. And this is really not background. This is really going to be part of his chest. So I am going to make it. And my brush strokes go in the direction of Okay. It almost looks like a lion right now, right? <laughs> so I got his face in this big orangey mane. Okay, I'm going to wash off my brush and I'm going to put blue in these two pockets right here. 
I need that background color on there to have something to then put paint on top of. But that's why we're doing that first. If you've ever done portraits of people, you're, you'll see the oil painters, um, if you've studied that or you do it yourself, you'll see that they actually do a background coloring, brown, blue, something usually dark, and then they leave the face that creamy white for later to fill in. And that gives you the face to shine forth and be noticeable. Okay. I'm just going to put some blue in here. Because this is going to be the shadowing that's happening underneath me. Oh, and I don't mind if it makes it a little bit with my wet orange or my wet red. That's okay. I'll go ahead and come to this slide because it's close to me. Uh, you know, if you have a gallery wrapped canvas like that, that just means that it could, the canvas went all the way to the back. Like this one, you know, it wraps to the side. So what I'm doing is just putting a little bit of paint onto the side of the canvas. If it is stretched or just stapled, you'll see the staples on the side. We don't call this gallery wrapped, um, but either way, uh, you, you're obviously going to have to frame this one to cover the staples, or you can put some some uh, medium on the top to hide the staples. And the other one, you couldn't, you don't have to frame it. You can just pop it up on your mantle. Okay, so I'm bringing my brush stroke now in toward the cat's face. Oh, that pet just ran away. I usually do an art lesson with the whole body of the cat, and this one happens to have the Mondrian squares of the primary colors that we are using. So um, I have them here. There's red, blue, and yellow, and um, Mondrian, who's a famous artist, he would use those colors uh, in his work. So we are using primaries today. And you might have added white if you wanted to make your blue lighter or your pink and orange lighter. Okay. I'm just going to soften my edges a little bit with a little bit of the blue that's mixed onto my brush with the wet red. Just soften those edges. Okay. All right, yay! Look at having fun. I enjoy it. I do, you can just about find me every day here in my studio if I'm not out at your place or your office. Painting your walls or teaching you an art lesson. I'll be here. Okay, now what I want to do is think about my eye color. With acrylic paint, I like to move around the canvas. So this is really drying right now. And now I want to go back over here and work on this. So it's kind of a layering technique where I have to let something dry and come back. Unless you want to mix and see what happens when I do wet on wet to get kind of a blue greeny brown color, which is fine, but you may not want to have that the whole the whole painting green brown. So you have to move around. I am gonna uh, use this as my my uh, model today. So I'm gonna make the blue eyes. I have a phyllo blue here and I'm just going to add a little titanium white. You can use artist grade paints. Uh, you can use the store that you shop at its brand. By the way, for this exercise. Okay, so I'm going to fill in these eyes with a pretty blue. 
Again, yours might be more slanted. I'm still using the same brush right now that I was using before. I'm not really ready to switch brushes. Yay, he's getting some eyeballs. That's the one thing people like to do and right away it's the eyes. So I'm not denying that. Let's get those eyes up there. And I gotta eyeball it up to see if they're actually about the same size. You see how I'm drawing with my arm? I'm not up there trying to, you can't do a circle. Let me switch actually to my round brush because I'm drawing round object. You can't do a free range of motion without using your whole arm to draw a circle. Because if you're choked up on the brush and you're just using your wrist, I can't get a a bigger range of motion and a nice circle. So please draw with the arm. I'm using a long handled brush because I'm standing, but if you're sitting, this will do just fine having a short handled brush. So they make them long and short. I should show you that in case some of you don't know the difference. So why is that? So long handle because I'm, I'm standing and standing away from it, and short might be because you're, you're down. Okay, so I've got one eye that's a little bit smaller than the other, so I'm just going to widen it just a bit. I'm going to put a black outline around it later. If you don't have black, don't paint it. Well, I can show you how to make brown. Okay, right, you're making brown. You didn't even know. This black is not on our list. So we don't have Okay, so the, the nose, what am I going to do with the nose? Well, to make pink, you're going to use red, and you're going to tint it with white. Believe it or not, you don't need much red. And I'm going to grab mostly white until I get the pink nose. Or orange, you could make an orange nose. This one was a pink nose. This one was an orange nose with a little yellow into my to get this one. Ooh, it looks like peach now. Peach color. Okay, so it's like an upside down Hershey's kiss. Ta -da. Look, now he's looking almost like a bird or something. Actually, birds have eyes on the sides of their heads, so it's definitely not a bird. Um, you will be a better painter when you actually observe wildlife when you're out camping and hiking and looking at things because you'll notice that animals that are preyed upon, the ones that are, um, you know, food for other food chains, uh, will have eyes in the front and then, um, I mean, eyes on the side. And then the ones who are doing hunting have the eyes in the front. So I guess our cat definitely hunts the bird. <laughs> okay, so I got two eyes and a nose. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited now. Now I've got to figure out what color do I really want a space to be. In this one, I made kind of a limey green. And over here, this is a pastel yellow. So this is yellow adding white. This is green adding white. How do I make green? that wasn't even on your list. You, it's funny, you know, it's really cool that you can make your own colors without having to buy all the colors. Um, so I'm going to take blue. I'm out of yellow, so I'm going to put a little more yellow on my plate. And this is where it might be good for me to actually switch and get a new plate. I'm still going to grab the blue off of the original plate, but now I've got some yellow on here, and I'm just going to scoop up some blue. You can use your brush to scoop up, or you could use a palette knife. This is like a little plastic knife. Honestly, you could just go to the pantry and grab a, a plastic knife. So, I, you know, you do with what you have. I'm not one of those that has to have every professional tool in the book. 
especially when I'm teaching all ages and abilities, I have really learned to adapt to trying new ways of painting and using different objects that you wouldn't normally have. Okay, so I have a pretty uh, green, but it's not the green I want. And I haven't added white yet. I can't wait to see what color you all chose for your, your beautiful cats. I did have a Persian cat. I named him Corbusier, or Corbu for short. I bet you can't guess why. If you've ever read my bio, you know that um, I studied architecture and practiced for 15 years. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so I wanted to have a really cool name for my cat. So I named him Corbusier. Le Corbusier is the name of the famous sir. See, you're learning math and art history on Saturday morning. You get to be smart doing art. <laughs> okay, I'm adding white to my lovely green, and I'm now I'm getting kind of a, I don't know, it looks like a yellow green with white. Add a little more blue. And more white. It's kind of a you know trial and error. I don't ever squirt more paint than I need because honestly, that's not a whole lot of paint that I'm actually going to need. Any paint. Okay, and still looking a little. I'm going to pour a little bit of different blue and green onto my canvas because I might have used a different blue when I was making that. Well, at least it's giving you a little bit of time to catch up. Okay, I'm coming up with a face color. I'm excited about this, actually. This might be a really good color. Okay, now I've got my color, my kind of minty green. And I'm going to paint on my face. So I'm going to go around his eyes. Painting the way hair grow. Yes. And then I'm going to come around the bottom of his eyes. <laughs> He's too cute. Okay. And <laughs> you can tell yourself your work looks very good. You know, makes you happy. No one else is listening anyway. It's your work. Be, be happy creating. I'm going to add some white right back over the top of that. Okay, so. And then I'm going to have some down here. Okay. I'm going to streak a little bit over his eyebrows like that. And I might pull some of that into his upper hair, like this. So he's filling in that face. Okay, so now the bridge of the nose right here is what I'm going to want to fill in. And you have to decide, you know, if you want to have that orange coming down. I know you see blue and yellow over that. But that's over the orange. So I'm going to go back to my orange and put the bridge of the nose now that I know exactly where my nose and eyes are. And I'm going to use that hog's hair brush and pull it right next to that green. That's what I didn't know before. I didn't know where my green was. And I'm just pulling that down on the bridge of his nose. The nose is a bone. It's actually a bone, and it does have the two nostrils in there. So that bone is going to kind of lay out a bit, so it looks like an hourglass. It's wide here, skinny in the middle, and it gets wider back to 
for the width of your nose. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry because the more I keep pulling on it, it's gonna pull it off. Okay? Now I want to go over here in this area and think about the rest of the space. I told you he's gonna be an orange cat. I used to have an orange cat and they need the sunshine. Yeah, so that was after the book. Well, guess I should tell you my other cats. Okay, so I'm going now over the eye with some of that oil. I'm going to accentuate the eye later by adding a lot more red, but right now I'm going to get that undertone in there. Yes, I'm going right over my marshmallow, but this time my hair is going in the direction of away from the face. It's away from the face. If you want to round out his cheek, because he's a little bit more lion-like, you can do that. Let's see. I am thinking I need more yellow on this place. If you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat. If, if there's something that you're having difficulty with or you just have a comment about something you really like, please type that in and Rosie can feed it to me. Because I can't, well, I can't hear you. Um, she can, she can unmute herself, and she can actually ask me the question. If you don't want, um, I won't say your name or who said the, the question. Just answer it. Nobody ever knows. So there's no, there's no wrong or stupid question. I kind of like to do this. Feel free. Absolutely. That's the nice thing about chiming in with me on a Saturday morning uh, or any of these live because you do get to chat with me. If you watch it later on YouTube, which you can, if you didn't get too far today or you had to leave the session, uh, we'll be able to catch up. But what's nice about doing it live with me is you can ask me questions and, um, and I get to see your work at the end. So I love that we get to interact. I love that the city of Good Year uh, is partnering with me to do these programs. I usually teach them in person. But when the pandemic came on, I moved everything online. So tell everybody to chime in into one of the other sessions. Couldn't make it today. It's very fun. Okay, so I'm still going away from this face, and it's really making this uh, cat become a reality here. If you want to lighten it around there, you could just add some white to your orange, which I just did. I put a little white on there. Kind of makes more a little tangerine peach color. You just want that closer to the eyes. I don't even care if I get a little bit into his eyeball. You could just wipe it quickly. How I clean something really quickly before it dries is I stick my napkin in some of my water that I use to clean my brushes, and I just wipe it real quickly before it dries. Otherwise, I could just come back and cover them with blue. I can also know that, note that I'm going to be doing an outline in my eyes, so that's okay. Now, I call this back painting. I'm back painting into the green face. I'm going the opposite direction. I'm using the flat head of the brush. Still using that same pause here because I'm, I like it on uh, raw canvas. I will be switching though as soon as the whole canvas is covered with at least one layer. Oh my gosh, I'm getting too cute. And look how I'm overlapping into my original orange. I want the hair to be layered. My cat Sunshine had had orange and red, and she had all the rays of sunshine. That's why I sunshine. I guess that's what an artist does. You know, you look at something and it just tells you 
uh, what to title it. When you have finished your painting today, you know exactly what to title your painting by looking at the expression and the emotion and the color that it evokes. So I'm still painting in the direction that something grows, grows or flows. If you were joining me um, last week when we did the uh, Tuesday class, the Tuesday Together Tondo class, no, that's not a dance, but we did water lilies, and we painted in the way water lilies. Yes, Tondo. Tondo means in the round, so painting in, in a round circle, and I just adapted the word to mean that we were painting together. Together in the round. See how smart you get on certain. I'll talk about those classes coming up later before we depart today. Oh my gosh, okay, so I pretty much got the whole canvas. I, I have a few spots missing there. So I'm going to take my other brush that had the green and fill that in. Okay. So at this point, everybody should be getting to the having the whole canvas covered with some color. So while you're doing that, I'll let Rosie speak for just a little bit. She's going to tell you about how you can leave me a tip or a donation if you're really enjoying yourself today. Um, I really appreciate that. I um, have blocked out this time, um, especially during this pandemic where uh, I'm not I'm not seeing you in person and I'm trying to figure out how to um, continue being a professional artist. And I appreciate anything that helps me with my time and my materials as I start to create new lesson plans for when we do get back together. And um, I, I'm very grateful. Very good. So I'll let Rosie talk to you for a second while you're finishing up your yeah. All right. So uh, Deborah does have them posted up on her canvas there um, and her board, but I will link them down below in the chat box. Um, you will have to copy and paste those onto your browser, and the codes will then come after. Um, so, like Deborah said, it's a donation for her time. Um, we're so grateful to have her here, especially on early mornings like today. Um, and she's just doing such a great job. We have had a really great outcome um, with these classes. So many participants, new new participants and returning participants. So, so this has really been a, a, a great success, and, and we thank Deborah. So. Um, if you're enjoying her time, um, definitely uh, leave her a donation. And um, like I said, I will leave those options in the chat box. Thank you so much, Rosie. I appreciate that. And all of you for chiming in, on a, like she said, on a, on a Saturday morning. Um, I uh, actually am a, a morning person, so I kind of love these sessions. But we do have, for those of you who are not working, we do have a 545 class on a Thursday, and uh, that's coming up. So if you're feeling a little groggy this morning, uh, be sure to chime in this coming Thursday at 545 at Arizona time. And we're going to be a pineapple. I'll show you a picture of it in just a minute. It's going to be kind of that same feeling where we're, you know how the pineapple top has a lot of the spikes. And I feel like we're doing that same spike stroke as we make hair. Okay, I am now putting in a little more. This area was dry, so I'm just going to keep layering some more and more color. I'll accent that. I save the black to the very end for brown, whatever we're going to make up, because it will muddy up your beautiful colors. 
So we don't want to put that on just yet. I mean, that, that really comes at the end. In most of my art, if I'm doing watercolor and I need to do some pen work or put the India ink, I'll usually put that toward the end. I just don't want to muddy up my composition. Uh, I want to get all the color on first. Okay, so let's give him some more hair. Oh, these are like his highlights, you know, the sun's glistening. So aren't you glad that you have that orange underneath so that the new yellow is not mixing with what's below? It's just like it's um, floating on top of the canvas. They call this scumbling because the color underneath is still shining through. Like I can see it. You still see that orange peeking through my pastel yellow. I, I took some of my yellow and my white and I made a little bit lighter yellow just to give him some highlights. And I'll put some here. I'm just going to go around the canvas for this little version. Or Laurel could have been my sunshine. She was a tabby, a long haired tabby. I think the younger crowd would enjoy this too. So, um, you 13 and above will probably really enjoy doing this project. So, if you have friends or grandkids, uh, you all could sit down and do it again. Look at the YouTube video. It will take about 24 hours for it to come up from the time that we're taping today. So uh, give yourself a little breather and then come back and enjoy your time. So I have now put on some highlights. That's what I call highlights, like if, if you're highlighting your hair. So this was my base color. These are my highlights. Now I want to do a low light, something that um, either complements this color or is in shade of this color. So that's the next thing I'm going to do. So I know this was made with yellow and well, red to make orange. So I could just use red, which is a deeper value than orange, or I could make the opposite of, of, of orange, which is blue. So I could put some blue in there. I think I'm going to do both, just because, because we have time to do that. All right, I gotta get some more napkins here. I've already dirty those up. And I'm gonna use red first. So I've got some red left on my plate here. So and you know what? I'm actually no, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with my hogs here, and then when I put the blue in, I'm gonna switch brushes because it had green on it. So I can kind of keep my cool colors to that brush. And my warmer colors keep this right now. I'm going to put some red in there. Look, he's got some red eyes. And I'm stumbling, meaning I can still see my highlights, my base color. And this is great too. So even if you, in your first painting of the background, you have some white spots that you didn't get. See, I don't worry about those things because that's why I don't put it on so thick at the beginning because I know I'm going to be putting other layers on. I'm going to catch all those little happy accidents. So, maybe come design bonuses for an opportunity to put my bed. Right there. You see how that's really helping the whole thing by adding the dark and the light of the color? Go in the direction of the hair. Don't start going up and down or you're going to have a really interesting kitty cat. Okay, so I'm going to add a little bit of the red down here. I think a sample. He's going to have a little shorter hairs right here on his chin turn. Okay, he's just cute. I want to pet this little bit. So I had 
Or Bouvier. And then I had Sunshine, who was a tabby. Uh, so I went from Persian to tabby. I didn't buy the Persian, by the way. My uncle gave it to me. Uncle Bill gave me the, um, the Persian while I was in college. It's a sweet gift. I could never have afforded it as a college student in Purebury. That. It's a nice companion. And then um, after Sunshine passed away, I bought two black tabbies. I, again, I go to the shelter. It's not, I don't, I don't seek them out. Anyway. So I had uh, Willie and Ada, and they were very different. They were the same color, same long hairs, but one was really stubby and large, and uh, that was Ada. And um, let's see, Willie was. Uh, Large and long, I mean, almost a brute like, uh, very big and strong, and was really weak. But they were great. They were great. And then I had kids. <laughs> Even though cats can take care of themselves, it wasn't that was the issue. Uh, my son's highly allergic to it, so I. Okay, just adding that red in there really makes all the difference. I'm going to put it really close to my blue to be down here. I really feel like that going over that gives me that purple. I love purple in that shadowy area. It's just the layering. All we're doing is layering. That's how I get to this technique. I don't put just one color. Call it a day. It's really layered. And I do that with watercolor beads. I do that with my fiber art. It's all about layers. I mean, with my fiber art, my, one of my layers is the actual stitching that I add to the canvas. So I could have painted a huge canvas, and then my next layer would be how I stitch to it, drawing it. So you can find all my, my techniques and my art on my website. It's my website at the Okay, so I've got highlights, lowlights. Oh, remember I told you I wanted to put a little blue back in there. So I still have a tiny bit of blue on my plate, but I told you I wanted to kind of switch and use my brush that had green on it. I'm just excited about that. So I'm just going to streak some blue. Wow. And I love using that round brush for that, so it's almost like a pencil point. But you could push really hard. You could push um, heavily onto the brush, right, and get a thicker line. See what you make the good ones. Or I can do some thin ones. All with these primary colors. I know you can go to the store and buy some colors. Wow. This in a pinch if you just really don't know what kind of color mix, but you end up mixing anyway. Um, so I think it's a good exercise to learn how to color mix yourself. Oh my gosh, you look like a a blue version. Blue in the maybe a few little strokes under his chin. Okay, I might put just the top of blue uh, in there. And then I want to have a little bit of light blue just as it's coming and reaching the nose. Because when it, the nose is sticking out of the train, so the light's hitting the top of that bone. Okay, I have the face of a cat. Only thing I have left to do is add that brown to black. So if you don't have black, we're going to teach you how to make the brown. And we're going to use that to pop the eyes and outline. I'm not usually one to outline. That's not really um, my style. Uh, so if you're not an outliner either, don't do that. But I 
o'clock. This would just be fun on a Saturday morning uh, to outline and make it more graphic. They call this the graphic art uh, rather than, so it can be read like if you were uh, on a subway or you were driving by, this would stand out more than something that's not outlined or you're just looking at the details on it. The more realism, expressionism, impressionism like we did with a lot of those. Okay, so let's make brown. Well, I've already got red on my plate. I've already got some yellow here too. I have the green left from his face. So what if I just take what I have or I pour in this is palette knife. Stick it here. Got a little bit of blue left. I might have to add definitely blue. See if I can come up with a dark color. So to make brown, it's all the primaries, or secondaries, or all the primaries and secondaries. They make different shades of brown. Sometimes people go, how did you decide what color to make something? And I'll say, uh, that's all I had. <laughs> so I am going to take my yellow, and more yellow. Even though it's green, I'm going to add the red. I'm trying to make brown. If you have black, then I guess you won't have to do this. Getting close. I'm getting close. I'm getting close. So green and red are going to give me kind of a mauve uh, light umber color. So the more, I'm going to add a little more blue to it. You can see it's turning brown. And that way you know how to do it. If I just told you, oh, I'll just squirt some brown on here. You will. The idea of these lessons are not only to create something cool, but to learn in the process. So now adding just a little tab of blue, I'm getting that dark brown that I want. Um, skin color is all your primaries too, right? And then it's just a matter of how dark we make it. There is no white skin or black skin. They're all shaped of brown, depending on how much red, blue, yellow they put in it. Okay, so I'm going to be able to use that for my eye color. I did use black on these. I just want you to know that so that you, they can show up better on the camera. I'm going to use brown here. So I'm going to use my round brush because I'm going to be drawing in a round circle. I am going to trace the eyeball. Just going to round the edges outside the eyeball. I want to keep the original circumference blue. So I'm going around the outside, and that's cleaning up any of the lines that splashed into the blue or that I didn't fill in. Okay, so I went around the blue dots. I'm going to do the same thing in the order that we started. I'm going to do the nose. I'm going to go around the nose. You barely push on the canvas. You don't have to put a lot of pressure. If you push really hard, let's say, here's another plate. If you push really hard, you're going to get a wide line. But if I just touch it gently, I can get a thin line. So it's about how much pressure you apply with a round brush. It can do wondrously, really a lot. All right, we 
we're gonna keep on going. We're almost there. We're almost there. Okay, so he has he has a, a mouth, just like he drew when you were in kindergarten. So you're gonna do two U shapes from the bottom of the nose. You can make them long like this if you want it more lion-like, or you can do a little more short. Sure feedback. Okay, so now he's got a smile. He's smiling. Okay, I think my eyeballs, for the most part, I mean, they've been dry for a while. So this shape is inside the eye. So the eye has of the cat when I looked at my um, library books. They definitely have um, an oval, either pointed or like slanted, or I could put that oval slant in like this. Even my goat eyes do that too. So let's go with an elongated oval inside. This is the, the pupil part. I'm putting the pupil on top of the iris. And I'm making it elongated with the brown that I made up. Okay, making it pretty skinny. Pupils are very skinny. All right, so now he's got eyes. I can take a little bit of the brown and give him some um, hair or eyelashes. Just a little protectant around our eye. You know, we have the lashes that help protect dust. I'm always picking at my dog's eyes, trying to get me the super dust his eyes. But I'm glad that he has hair there that's keeping all that dust from getting the so, it does serve a purpose. So I'm putting those on both eyes. You could give him crazy ones like this one, or just tiny ones like this one. You're the artist, you get to choose. You know, I can do this a thousand times and I'm going to get a different look every time. Just like each of you are doing one that's going to look different than anybody else's. So I know, like, doing paint parties like this, um, it seems like, oh, I don't want to paint that same thing everybody else is doing. But I I never see the same look from everybody. I mean, everyone's doing something different. And mine all looks different. Plus, you're practicing. You're practicing all these tools so that when you're ready to make your original, then you have all of the abilities that you've been learning. Okay, so I put in his um, hair around the eye to protect it. I haven't put in the whites of the eye. That's the reflection and glare that we all have in our eyes. I haven't put even the white highlights. So I always put the dark towards the end, and the white is the last. Because I don't want that to get too blue. Um, so I'm letting this eye dry a little bit before I put the whites in the eye. At this point, you can sign your work. While we're waiting for that brown to dry. If there are any questions for me, I'm happy to take questions. Please let me know. Let's see. I mixed up all my paint. I'm going to do my main book. Let's see. Um... For just a tad more, we're going to sign it in the blue area. This is where I might switch to one of those smaller brushes that I was showing you earlier. Name down here. And then I want to talk to you too about the next class. I don't want to forget about that. Make sure when you sign your name, it's inside the frame. So if I were to frame this painting, it's going to crop at least um, a half an inch at the bottom. So make sure your name is floating at least a half the quarters off the bottom. Um, I usually sign left or right. Um, and I think when you were younger, you used to write it right across on top of the paint. So this art is not about your name. There is a time when you do art about your name. But, um, this just becomes a, just a, a documentation of a, of a time and place of when you did this. You can even date it if you want. But I think it's really important to be proud of your work and to sign your work. I just say that all the time to my students. Uh, a lot of people are like, no, I don't want anybody to know I did it. Well, yeah, 
you need to sign it. Somebody will go along for years from now going, who did this? This is really interesting. And it may not be that he was the best artist or he thought he was the best artist, but someone will know something about you, that you they appreciate you for trying something or uh, leaving them just a legacy of who you are and what you're about. Okay, now um, I'm just going to, while you're tying that up, before I do the white dots, I just want to talk about our next class really quickly. Um, I wanted to do acrylic painting again, and it will be Thursday night at 5.45, and we are going to do a pineapple. Uh, so, um, if you have a pineapple, it is the season. I love this time of the year. I mean, they're so sweet. Why uh, mix the best, right? They grow them. Um, you could have that as a model for yourself, but um, I'm going to walk you through how to do the shade and all of these spiky gleams that are on the pineapple. And then the more I studied the pineapple, oh my gosh, there is the Fibonacci. We'll talk about a little more math. Um, I had a, little, a friendly little bee. Um, I, I've been into bees lately, illustrated a couple of books on the kind. And um, so with, with the Honey Foundation, so um, just add a little friendly little creature on there. And then um, that's Thursday, 545. If, um, if that's not a really good time for you, you could watch it later. But again, you'll be able to chat with me uh, and ask questions. Acrylic paint, it was the same paints we did today. But look, oh my gosh, it looks more green. But we're using the same color. I mean, it's just a matter of how much of one color that you use. Like this one has mostly yellow and yellow and blue to make the green. So there's less red with this one. Um, and then I think the next one we have is going to be on a Tuesday. That's the Tuesday Tondo together, and it's uh, the 23rd of June at 11 a.m. So we used to have this class on Wednesday to kind of give you a break throughout the week. We moved it to a Tuesday at 11 a.m., thinking probably a better time for people through your lunch hour. I uh, would just take a break, uh, try something. Usually I do a watercolor class during that time, so you kind of sitting at your desk and you're not on your easel, you have all your uh, things out. And we are going to be using watercolor in the markers. You know the little washable markers that Crayola makes? So it'll be really nice to do that. Um, and we're going to do Venice. I asked you last time if you liked France or Italy. And we try to find a picture of the... Oh, this picture right here. La, 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 la. So this was done by Monet. He did the water lilies by Monet. He actually did landscapes as well. So here we go with that. And then the finished product, you get to watercolor. It may look hard, but it really isn't. I'm just dotting. I'm dotting with the marker that I dipped in water. It's very simple, not hard at all. These things look hard when you first look at them, but they're really, I take you through it step by step. And then you, you're like, oh, my gosh, I did that. It's so fun. Okay, I think I talked to them now so that now we can have the white. It's about it's about um, adding those layers. All right, let's see. Put a little white on here, and we're going to add some white right now. Now you could take that oil pastel if you wanted. I don't even know where I can put it down now, but or we could just use white paint. So I'm going to take the white paint and I'm going to dip it in here. And I'm going to make some dots. So we're going to have a dot here, a dot here. Like they're actually evenly spaced them out. Look. Oh my gosh. Yay. Oh, look. look. Yes. So I put about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven dots near the top of this eye. And then I'm going to do it on here, on this side. I'm barely touching the canvas. I know if you hear my dog crying in the background. He's trying to get my attention. And then we're going to take the white. And we're going to put some dots near 
top of his nose because that nose is wet. And that means he's healthy and he's doing great. And I, so I want to have a little white on the top of his nose. So I'm also going to put a little bit of white streaked through those hairs near his eye. Just for added highlights. I just love that. You know, that just brightens his face a little bit um, to have a little white near there. Brings focus. And I could streak a little a little bit of white in throughout. Not Faded white if you haven't already. That would show up in the corner. And voila, you have a kitty cat. All to yourself. Oh my gosh, it's so fun. Very fun. Maybe the next one you do, you do the um, whole body, you know. Oh, God. Okay, so I'm going to let Rosie uh, go ahead and uh, turn on your sound so that you could talk to me while you're finishing up, or you might want to, I hope you want to show it to me, you can show me your uh, your painting that you've done. That would be great. I'm, ex I'm excited to see.